The terms of reference as outlined by the Government of the Commonwealth of Dominica is presented below. Terms of Reference, Electoral Reform Since independence in 1978 Elections in the Commonwealth of Dominica have been governed by the House of Assembly, Elections Act and the Registration of Electors Act of the Revised Laws of Dominica. These laws have not been substantively revised. From 2004, the Government of Dominica has invited election observers to participate in Dominica's electoral process. They along with the Electoral Office have submitted reports over the years with strengthening the electoral process. The main political parties in Dominica accepted the recommendations for the introduction of ID cards for voting and the revision of the electoral register, but opposition parties have disagreed, at times violently, with the means of achieving these reforms, and have not accepted the draft legislation put forward by the government to achieve them. This led to a particularly contentious pre-general election process in December 2019. With two, key issues being highlighted, namely identification cards, and the need to update the voters list. The elections themselves were found to be free and fair by all election observer missions. In keeping with the commitment of the Prime Minister to the people of Dominica, to have this issue examined and recommendations made for implementation of reform by a neutral third party of high repute, Sir Dennis Byron, former President of the Caribbean Court of Justice, is being engaged to achieve the following. Objectives Review existing legislation, reports front the various chief election officers, election observers and experts, including the addendum by the Commonwealth expert Pauline Walsh. Conduct and review the results of public consultations and advise on changes to improve the electoral process. Review and advise on the provisions for eligibility to vote including the use of identification cards for the purposes of voting and whether the law ought to also provide for other or additional methods of identification in keeping with the constitutional right to vote. Advise on the best process for maintaining the updated electoral register that will not result in the repudiation of the right to vote and slash or disenfranchisement of legitimate, qualified voters, including the process recommended in the aforementioned addendum or any submissions or recommendations made by stakeholders during the public consultations. Required action. Conduct consultations with stakeholders to include the government political parties, civil society, civic groups, NGOs and other interested persons, individuals, organizations or groupings, and invite written and oral submissions from stakeholders. Review electoral laws, draft electoral amendment and submissions written and oral. And conduct research if necessary or required. Provide a report that advises on the way forward including, but not limited to, any recommended legislative reforms to achieve the above stated objectives. Structure of report. The issues that have been identified can be categorized under two general headings. The cleaning up of the electoral lists with emphasis on voter identification, and 2. The electoral process with emphasis on campaign financing. I have been mindful that my engagement carries the expectation of bridging the sharp divisions of opinion that have hindered the completion of this reform exercise over several years. In light of this background, legislative support is required to give effect to a substantial part of the recommended reforms. The existing legislation regarding the registration of electors as well as the electoral process was initially passed before independence and has been a flashpoint for political disagreement and community dissatisfaction. Merely amending the existing laws would not satisfy the goals of the reform exercise. New legislation is required to modernize the electoral system and to bring it to conformity with international best practices. I have decided to complete the presentation and subsequently solicit acceptance of the legislative framework for the registration of electors before engaging in consultations on the electoral process. This was partly motivated by the fact that the results of the reforms on the registration of electors will require immediate implementation by the Electoral Office which can commence while the work on the electoral process is being completed. I have therefore decided to submit the report in two phases. Phase 1, being the registration of electors and Phase 2, being the electoral process. 
In Phase 1, the report will address the preliminary issues and the proposed legislation for the registration of electors. Subsequently, in Phase 2, the report will address some institutional matters regarding the Electoral Commission and the proposed legislation for the improvement of the electoral process. This approach was discussed with and approved by the Electoral Commission. The approval of the government was obtained for the modification of my mandate in this manner. The service of Dr. Beverly Pereira, a legislative drafting specialist, was retained to perform the required legislative drafting work. The Registration of Electors Bill and the Registration of Electors Regulations were drafted. Extensive consultations were held with the Electoral Commission on those drafts. The consultation took longer than expected as it was characterized by robust discussions which resulted in several modifications of the draft documents. Eventually consensus was reached on almost all issues, and I decided to engage the government and opposition in consultation with a view to reaching consensus with them before formally presenting my report at the end of November 2022. However, general elections were unexpectedly called before this process was completed. I have decided to continue with my engagement and this Phase 1 report is being presented in accordance with the timetable I provided. Background For several years, the issue of electoral reform has been highly controversial and has dominated public discourse in the Commonwealth of Dominica. Since about 2009, the government of the Commonwealth of Dominica has invited election observers to observe the electoral process of its general elections. From 2009, various election observers participating in the three general elections held during this period submitted reports with suggestions for improving the electoral process in the Commonwealth of Dominica. However, it does not appear that the recommendations from various reports and consultations were implemented prior to the last general election. The Dominica Labour Party, OLP, was victorious in the December 6, 2019, general elections winning 18 of the 21 electoral seats. During that election the call for electoral reform was widespread. Consequently, Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, during his victory speech on election night, 2019, committed to pursuing electoral reform. He stated that the matter would be addressed in a manner that satisfied the national interest and disclosed the government's plans to prioritize electoral reform on its national agenda. The Commonwealth OAS Special Mission observers to the December general elections, through its report noted that the participation of members of the opposition, as well as other stakeholders, will be crucial for the success of the reform initiative, for finding solutions to the political and electoral challenges that affected the 2019 elections and in re-establishing an environment for respectful and constructive political dialogue in Dominica. On September 1, 2020, the government of the Commonwealth of Dominica appointed Sir Dennis Byron, former president of the Caribbean Court of Justice, to examine and review the electoral processes in the Commonwealth Dominica, to make recommendations for electoral reform and provide a report that advises on the way forward including, but not limited to, any recommended legislative reforms to improve the electoral process. The importance of these electoral reforms was emphasized by the Caribbean Court of Justice when it commented that, there remains areas of grave concerns about how the process of these 2019 general elections were conducted. Future elections in Dominica ought not to proceed with these or similar taints. Scope of work and methodology. In keeping with the division of reporting into two phases, this report will address matters relating to the registration of electors. As noted in the Commonwealth Secretariat, Election Management, Compendium of Commonwealth Good Practice, 2016, no country has a perfect electoral or democratic system. And no election management body is beyond review criticism. Democracy and the efforts to realize this ideal through elections are always a work in progress. Electoral reforms should improve the participation of citizens in electoral practices and strengthen the management and framework of national and local government elections. There has been much public discourse in the Commonwealth of Dominica on the question of electoral reform which significantly intensified leading up to and during the last general elections held in December 2019. However, there were many efforts at reform including proposed changes to the relevant legislation which were published, however, regrettably were never passed by Parliament. 
At least part of the reason has been the very sharp divisions of opinion on this aspect of the governance of the Commonwealth of Dominica. During consultation with the Electoral Commission, we took a decision that I should expand my mandate by drafting consequential legislation. Most importantly, the Commission considered, and I agreed, that bearing in mind its composition it would be important to obtain its approval of the proposed legislation with the expectation that gaining its consensus would increase the probability of speedy enactment. This report is aimed at gaining the consensus of the people of the Commonwealth of Dominica as a whole. Scope of Work Mindful of the mandate to effectively review the election process and legislation, to identify challenges which impede the voting rights of eligible citizens, and expand it to present Parliament-ready legislation, this review was conducted with the goal of achieving the following objectives. Review existing legislation and reports from various past consultants, chief elections officers, and experts. Review and advise on the provisions for voter eligibility including the use of identification cards for the purposes of voting and whether the law ought to also provide for other or additional methods of identification. Advise on best practices for maintaining the updated electoral register that will not result in the repudiation of the right to vote and or disenfranchisement of legitimate, qualified voters. Present a registration of electors bill and registration of electors regulations. The review exercise commenced following the description of the required action outlined in the terms of reference. Consultations were conducted with key stakeholders which included the political parties, civil society, general public, and the electoral commission. The modality of the consultations included meetings, written submissions, and an election survey which was made available on the website of the electoral office for completion by any eligible voter in the Commonwealth Dominica. Further information on the findings of the consultations is presented under the Stakeholder Engagement section of this report. Additionally, in-depth research and review of the existing electoral laws and electoral amendment bills was conducted as well as, a review and analysis of past reports was conducted to examine similarities in findings and to confirm whether any of the recommendations from the past reports had been implemented. Review of Relevant Constitutional and Legislative Framework the constitutional provision and legislation of direct relevance to the registration of electors are The Constitution of the Commonwealth of Dominica, Sections 38 and 56 The Registration of Electors Act The Registration of Electors Regulations Review of Existing Reports These recommendations were presented to the Commonwealth of Dominica over the years on the matter of electoral reform. I can report that the various recommendations all point in the same direction. The challenges identified are consistent with the various General Election Observer reports as well as the Pauline Welsh Consultant Report of 2017 and its addendum, which recommended several legislative amendments to the Registration of Electors Act and the Registration of Electors Regulations to improve the voter registration procedures and to provide for a full re-verification exercise of the voters list. The report also provided recommendations to improve the administrative structure of the Electoral Commission. Without intending to minimize the value of other reports, but with the objective of brevity, I have selected the two reports which together include most of the proposals made in the various reports. Please see below a matrix of the main recommendations from the Pauline Welsh Report of 2017 and its addendum, and the OAS Final Report on the December 2019 elections. This matrix includes proposals relating to the Electoral Office, Campaign Finance, and the House of Assembly Elections Act which will be addressed I-7 the Phase 2 report. Stakeholder Engagements To gain better understanding and for the purpose of inclusivity, stakeholder consultations were conducted to obtain feedback. Meetings Key Political Parties Dominica Labor Party United Workers Party other organization. Dominica Business Forum. Written submissions. In an effort to obtain feedback from other key stakeholder groups slash organization, 34 local organizations were invited to provide written submissions on challenges and recommendations for electoral reform in the Commonwealth of Dominica. The list of the organizations invited to provide written submissions is attached as A1 next to. 
Submissions were made by 27 organizations. Of the 27 participants, six persons were affiliated with political parties, ruling and opposition, another 10 with non-governmental organizations and 12 persons listed as other, although not stated. The report of the findings of the written submissions is attached as Annex 3. Election Survey The General Election Survey was open to all eligible voters in the Commonwealth of Dominique with online access to collect their opinions attitudes on matters related to the electoral process and ideas for reform. A total of 824 persons participated in the online survey with 25 persons not completing all questions which resulted in their removal for the analysis of the responses. The electronic survey was conducted through the period of April 27 to June 15, 2021 which collected feedback on the satisfaction levels of the electoral process and provided an opportunity for the respondents to give their input on changes that should be considered in the electoral process. The report with the findings of the election survey is attached as Annex 4. The stakeholder engagement meetings and submissions identified the following key challenges with the current electoral system. Verification of eligible voters. There has been no re-verification exercise on the register of electors to confirm its status and accuracy. Dominica is one of the few remaining countries in the Caribbean that does not employ the use of a voter identification card system. Residency of Voters The current electoral system does not provide mechanisms to verify the residency of voters. Feedback from the Commission is that the legislation does not include any definition of residency and consequently this impedes the authenticity and credibility of the current electoral system. Campaign Financing Reform while there has been concern expressed on the matter of financing of political parties and campaigns, and the level of influence this may have on the electoral process, there are no regulations on the limits for campaign expenses or donations, cash or in-kind, or on disclosure of sources of funding. Autonomy of the Electoral Office The Electoral Management Organization should operate with a level of independence from the executive of the government and should be equipped with the requisite human resources and capacity. Additionally, the office should optimize technology to strengthen the transparency and accountability of the electoral process. The Common Ground Consultation with the Commission From the time of my appointment, it was clear the most important stakeholder was the Electoral Commission. My appointment was made before the appointment process of the Commission was complete. My decision to wait on the Commission was rewarded with their agreement to work closely with me. There are five commissioners. Two are appointed by the governing party, two by the official opposition party, and the chairman is appointed by the president. It would only be fair for me to report that during the course of our sessions, each member of the commission declared that despite the manner of selection they considered their role once appointed to be independent and with responsibility to the people of Dominica. The consultation was very important to the development of my recommendations. Commissioners participated in the stakeholder consultations and were available for consultation on demand. By the time my recommendations were initially formulated, in conjunction with the Commission, I decided that merely presenting a report or advice was not likely to achieve the objective of having the reforms actually implemented. Past experience suggested that the process of translating any advice given into legislation was likely to be tied up in prolonged debate, in similar fashion to all earlier efforts at reform. We decided that I should eliminate that possibility and present Parliament-ready legislation, addressing the registration of electors first. The Commission, having informed the government and opposition stakeholders of this decision engaged Dr. Beverly Pereira a legislative drafting expert. She joined in the consultation process in February 2022. Her contributions were critical to the exercise. Drafts were prepared and discussed in detail with the Commission. The discussions were very robust and time-consuming. However, attitudes of maturity and willingness to compromise developed and achieved the desired objective and most controversial issue were eventually resolved and were necessary or desirable the draft legislative instruments were modified. It was on November 4, 2022 that Dr. Pereira declared the drafting completed. 
I circulated the proposed legislation to the Commission with draft correspondence to be sent to the Prime Minister, the leader of the opposition, and the leader of the UWP who at that time was a different person. The purpose was to seek consensus with the Commission on a final round of consultation with the government and main opposition stakeholders and a proposed legislative timetable. The timetable was to be Formal delivery of the first phase of my report by the end of November. The government would lay the registration of electors' bill and the registration of electors' regulations before Parliament during the month of December with a view for enactment in January 2023. Formal delivery of the remaining legislation February-March 2023 with a view to having the legislation enacted March-April 2023. Subsequently, I arranged for the correspondence to be sent to the said stakeholders. This coincided with the unexpected dissolution of Parliament and calling of elections to take place on December 6, 2022. I remained in contact with the Commission and completed this report to be formally presented with the proposed legislation. Current process relating to the registering of electors. Constitutional and legislative framework. The Commonwealth of Dominica gained its independence from Britain on November 3, 1978 and uses the Westminster parliamentary system. As a republic, its head of state is the president. The legislature is a unicameral parliament called the House of Assembly established under Chapter 3 of the Constitution which consists of 21 elected representatives, 9 senators and the attorney general as an ex officio member. The Speaker of the House is the 32nd member of the House who is elected by the House from outside its membership. The current system for electing individual members of the House of Assembly is by simple majority of votes in each constituency in a general election, the first-past-the-post system is employed, with the candidate who receives the most votes in each constituency declared the representative for that constituency in the Assembly. National elections are constitutionally due every five years and local elections are held every three years. Elections are managed by the Electoral Commission, created under the Constitution at Section 38 of 1, which states, the Electoral Commission shall be responsible for the registration of voters for the purpose of electing representatives and for the conduct of elections of representatives and senators and shall have such powers and other functions relating to such registration and elections as may be prescribed by law. The Constitution provides for a chief elections officer to assist the Commission in discharging its functions by providing directions to the registering officers regarding voter registration and the conduct of elections. In addition to the Constitution, the other pertinent pieces of legislations and regulations used to govern the electoral process are The House of Assembly Elections, Act, the Registration of Electors Act. The House of Assembly, Disqualification, Act. The House of Assembly, Election Petition Rules, and The House of Assembly, Election, Regulations. National Governance and General Elections. Registration and Verification Process. Currently voter registration is done through assistant registering officers, appointed by the Commission. An ARO is appointed for each polling district. In addition, the Commission appoints a registering officer for each constituency. The ARO's work is done under the supervision of the registering officer. The Chief Elections Officer is the Chief Registering Officer. To get registered, the intended voter would visit the home of an ARO and complete the required form, Notice of Claim, Form 3. In addition to producing ID, a witness is required to certify that the residency requirement is met. Once the necessary forms have been completed, the voter is given a certificate of application, which bears the voter registration number. The ARO verifies the accuracy of the information, including the residency requirement. Following this, the documents are transmitted to the electoral office through the registering officer. Eligibility to vote. In Dominica, the Register of Electors is the official list of persons who are eligible to vote in elections. The Constitution provides that every a Commonwealth citizen of the age of 18 years or upwards with relevant qualifications relating to residence or domicile shall, unless disqualified by Parliament, be entitled to be registered as a voter. 
It is to be noted that persons eligible to vote include persons who are not citizens of Dominica. Residence Qualification The legislation defined the qualifications relating to residence or domicile. A person is qualified to register to vote in a polling district if that person is a citizen of Dominica or is a Commonwealth citizen who has resided in Dominica for a period of 12, 12 months immediately before the qualifying date is a minimum of 18 years of age and has resided in that polling district for a continuous period of at least three months immediately preceding the date of registration, but in the case of a person who has attained the age of 18 years within the period of three months immediately preceding the date of his registration, no such residence qualification shall be required. Disqualification the persons with residence qualification who are disqualified to vote are persons of unsound mind, undergoing any sentence of imprisonment in Dominica of more than one year, is under sentence of death imposed by any court in the Commonwealth, is disqualified by any written law. Becoming registered as elector The statutory scheme to be registered as an elector was designed to foster integrity in the registration process by allowing an applicant to make a claim and then requiring verifications and possible revisions by the electoral authorities. A person can apply under Section 11 4, through the Assistant Registering Officer ARO, in a polling district by completing the application form and providing documentary identification, and a witness must attest the person's eligibility for registration. The ARO submits information to the Registering Officer RO, who decides whether to allow or disallow the application. If the application is disallowed, it must be referred to the CRO for verification. An appeal lies to the Commission on the decision of the CRO whose decision shall be final. If the application is allowed, after checks against duplicate records, the CRO completes process. Liability to removal from the register A person can be removed from the register if the person has died, an objection to a person's resignation has been allowed, if the person has been absent from Dominica for a period exceeding five years and if the person has become disqualified for registration under any law that imposes such disqualification as a registered elector. Verifying and updating the register Inevitably, the number of Dominicans who meet the criteria for voting eligibility is in continual evolution, as new Dominicans reach the age of majority, registered voters pass away, Dominican citizens disestablish residence in Dominica, among other things. The number of registered voters has in fact increased. From 1980, when there was a total of 38,452, to 2014, when there was a total of 72,533. One can juxtapose the fact that the percentage of votes cast has declined during the same period. From 1980 when the percentage was 80.21% to 2014 when there was 57.31% 10. In 2019 the figures were Number of electors 74,895 Number of ballots cast 40,762. This continual change in electors' eligibility necessitates mechanisms to maintain an accurate register of electors. These mechanisms are the statutory requirements of periodic review of information and publication of updated lists and registers by the Commission. These include publication of update preliminary registers not later than September 30th every year, and corrected annual lists of electors before the 30th of November each year than other related lists, and the statutory principle of continuous registration 13 with inputs from the electors. The statutory scheme to ensure accuracy and integrity of the register of electors is based on the publication of various lists created by the Electoral Commission. These are a supplemental register of electors published quarterly. Corrupt and illegal practices list published at least 14 days before the preliminary electors register, persons convicted of a corrupt or illegal practice. The preliminary register of electors published once per calendar year not later than September 15, 16, list prepared by enumerators in accordance with Act. Claims and Objections Period 
CRO must publish notice stating that claims may be made to the omission and objections may be made to the inclusion of any person's name on the preliminary register, and claims and objections must be made within seven days following publication of preliminary register. The revised final annual list published on or before November 30th each year. Final list of electors 13 published within seven days of the writ of elections. The lists are updated at several intervals each calendar year, and electors are given the ability to claim registration or object to the registration of others appearing on the preliminary lists. The culmination of these processes occurs when an election is called, and the chief elections officer puts together a final list of electors based on the revised annual list plus a supplementary list that is created for persons that have become eligible since the publication of the last revised annual list of electors. The lists and mechanisms used in the maintenance of the register of electors.